The only man to wield as much presidential power in Uganda as Idi Amin was Paulo Mwanga, who from May to December 1980 led the country with an iron hand until he handed over power to his party leader, Milton Obote. In this series on the election that ended in bloodshed, New Vision TV follows Paulo Mwanga until his death. Although many people knew Paolo Mwanga as a tough, no-nonsense man, he still surprised the world when from a lowly position of chairman of one of the several commissions of the post-Amini government, he sacked President Godfrey Binaisa in 1980 and started organizing elections. Then he surpassed even his enemy's wildest expectations when on the election day he took over the powers of the Electoral Commission to announce the results. After giving the victory to his friend and party chairman Milton Obote, their pal Major General Oyita Ojok joked at the swearing-in ceremony that Mwanga was now a man without a job. Mwanga smiled in public for the first time since he had taken power. After Obote assumed office for the second time, he named Mwanga as his vice president and also gave him the powerful portfolio of defense minister. As the UPC government suffered internal tribal divisions in the army between Acholi and Langi, Mwanga started building what was unofficially known as UPC Buganda. Towards the end of the UPC government, there was a fierce battle between the army factions in the city, and as military and state officials fumbled with an explanation, Mwanga famously described the battle as uncoordinated troop movement. Finally, the army overthrew the government, and to everybody's surprise, the vice president and defense minister was named as prime minister of the new government. The new government of General Tito Kelo knew that they could not contain Yoram Museveni's guerrilla National Resistance Army that made more gains, while the tribal factions of the army fought each other and was now controlling a large part of Uganda's territory. The Okelos sued for peace, and President Arab Moy started organizing to mediate the two parties in Nairobi. But the NRS set as a first condition the removal of Mwanga from prime ministership before they could even consider joining the talks. So after just a month in office, Paolo Mwanga lost the high position of prime minister, which was then given to Abraham Waligo, an engineer with a clean record. After the Nairobi peace agreement collapsed and NRA captured power in January 1986, Mwanga remained a free man for about 10 months. Then he was arrested and detained. In prison, he met an old friend, Israel Mayengo, with whom they shared a cell. Mayengo had been an ally of Yorim Seveni and still swears he doesn't know why the NRA government detained him without trial for a year. Mwanga and Mayengo had worked together clandestinely in the 70s, both financing the anti Amin military and diplomatic struggles. Mwanga had been Uganda's ambassador to France for six years until the early 70s and had remained in Europe, mobilizing against Idi Amin. Mayengo, a prosperous businessman, had later worked with Mwanga buying arms and recruiting anti-Amini soldiers. Meeting in prison, they reforged their friendship and in their cell, Mwanga surprised Mayengo by telling him that he would be released after one year and he, Mwanga, would be staying on for another full year before being released. Mwanga's prediction of the time he and Mayengo would spend in detention passed exactly as he said and he was released in 1988. But he was rearrested and detained again in 1989. In 1990, he fell critically ill and was released so as to access quality medical treatment. Mwanga had in the 60s met at several young politicians who had grown significantly in status. They included the Troika of Bidandi Sali, Kintu Musoke, and Kirunda Kivei Jinja, who were then already in Museveni's government. The three had refused to rejoin UPC when Amin fell and instead joined Jerome Museveni in 1980 to form the Uganda Patriotic Movement. 
These three organized to fly Mwanga, their mentor, to a Nairobi hospital where he spent his final days. He died in April 1991, aged 70. Mwanga is remembered for making it possible for Bote to become president for a second time. Will history condemn or credit him for this?